everybody. Thank you for being here. Today, our webinar is a very interesting uh, topic, BPW and the use of technology. And our speakers, Sandra de Sousa from BPW Australia. She is entrepreneur in communications and IT, BPW International, former finance officer. She was in the last term in charge of marketing and social media of BPW, helping us to increase our visibility in a huge way. And Lisa Fong from BPW Hong Kong. She is communication specialist and digital strategist, current president of BPW Hong Kong, BPW past executive secretary in her club, a very young and active member. Thank you. Thank you, the speakers. Thank you, our attendants, for, for being with us. The floor is yours. And um, I'm just going to start off with, obviously, you're here to learn about use of technology. Just a little bit background on myself. And I thought Yasmin, in particular, and Anne might enjoy this photo. This is one of the photos that I got from the Congress um, um, handbook or the, um, um, I can't remember the document's name, but um, basically where I was there presenting the financial workshop. But I was very honored to be part of the International Executive Board as a finance director between 2012 and 2014. Um, I've been a member of BPW Sydney since 2002 and have also been uh, the New South Wales State President uh, for a few years before being on the International Board. But I've come back and was the Sydney President for, the, for a couple of years and have this amazing, um, um, who's actually from Mexico, who's now the current Sydney President and doing an amazing job and I'm mentoring her, so she's taken over for me. Um, in terms of my professional background, I was the I founded a digital marketing agency back in 2012, and uh, in it grew significantly. I've had a big team, and in 2018, I sold it to a large uh, organisation. Um, and one of the reasons why I want to do that is because I guess ties in with my work with BPW. Um, I founded. A new company called Elect in 2019, being last year, and I'm still working on it. And it is, uh, uh, I'm trying to create gender balance through the digital marketplace that's connecting entrepreneurs with uh, corporate and government buyers. I can certainly talk about that more later, but, um, but that's a little bit of my background. And I guess, like what Anne said, um, aside from being um, good at marketing, I'm a serial entrepreneur, I'm a technology advisor, and I've also, in my early career, um, been very much in corporate, and I like to call myself ex-corporate. Okay, so this is why I would like you to test out the chat channel to let me know what is it that you think, um, why you're here. Um, well, sorry, chat channel to test that it works, but my question is to you is, why are you here on this um, webinar? And what is it, what are the reasons here today that you would like to learn? Um, I would like to find out from you so that I can really create what works for you. So I'm just going to quickly stop share and see the comments that are coming through. So I've got, um, yep, yeah, I've got some comments here, a uh, couple of comments here. Would you like to add, what would you, like to tell me um, that I guess the sort of problem or the pain that you're feeling, you know, being um, doing what you're doing uh, with BPW in terms of what you want to learn, what can I help you with? It's really that is what I'm trying to find out. If you tell me what is what are the challenges that you're feeling um, that you are struggling with, and this is why I'm here is to try and help you. So I'm keeping tabs on the time, by the way, Anne, so that I guess I could talk a lot, um, but this is really good. So I've got um, wanting to have a, 
uh, formulate a digital strategy for sustainability and relevance. Um, we've got here about expertise to help move your club forward and also to uh, leverage the power of social media and other tech. This is great. Um, so today I probably, I, I wasn't, um, with the slide I didn't really include much on social media, but certainly happy to help that because I did publish a book about social media. Um, so what I'm going to do is go into um, how to help move your club forward and also to engage your club members um, using the technology. And I agree with you, Chantel, that you know you don't want to fall on one person and um, and how do you access that. So what I'm going to do is go back to sharing the screen. And, all right, so you guys have told me what is it that you want to learn and what are your challenges. Um, and before I start on that, I will talk to you about technology and what I've seen um, in terms of what works and what doesn't work is we're very lucky in this day and age in terms of there's so many technology that are out there and um, and they are actually free. Like there is a free version. A lot of them offer a free version, especially for clubs. It's so ideal because you um, don't need to have a lot of members um, to use the software or that you can have it set up that, you know, it could be just one user or the committee being a handful of users to be the administrators and not having to uh, pay for everybody to use it. It all varies with different technology. The other thing um, what's really good is, you know, being cost effective as well. So even if you have to pay for some, you're not talking about a serious investment. So I do know, even being a former president of a local club, um, is how expensive or how little operational budget that you have and uh, you need to make it more efficient. And so what I do suggest is that when you do find the software, where it does fall down though, is that it doesn't necessarily improve efficiency. You actually need to find software that helps you improve efficiency and not add more administration. I've seen that yes, you want to have a database where it becomes your source of truth, but what happens is that we need you need administrators to manage that source of truth. Um, and then you also then struggle whether the information is going as accurate. And when you don't have your members or your committee adapting to it, then the information is not accurate or it's too hard because it just takes too much time. It just falls over. So for me to tell you about the right technology, yes, that is great. And, and I am I'm, I'm going to share what works really well. Um, but but the problem a lot of the times I've seen when it's not adapted well is because it's set up not so efficiently and not to enhance your um, you know the life of a volunteer um, to support your club. The other thing that I also do um, recommend is automate as much as possible. You can do this very easily with the existing software. Um, one thing that I did I'm not I haven't mentioned in the next slide is a system called Zapier, which also has a free version. And Zapier can connect the systems to make your life a lot easier. Okay, so um, what we have here are the various systems that I um, highly recommend. And um, I highly recommend for any of you to look at Wild Apricot. So Wild Apricot is a management system. So instead of giving you all the options, what I'm going to do is go straight into it, that these are the recommended systems that I think would work with club and federation level. And I'm already seeing some BPW organization um, around the world adapting to some of the systems that I mentioned over here. So if I could, uh, I'm just going to quickly stop share, because just to make sure that you're all there. Uh, Wild Apricot is one of the uh, ideal system that really um, helps you in terms of uh, managing what I call the source of truth, which is a CRM system. So if I just do this, 
and I see a lot of organization that actually uses um, um, Excel spreadsheets to work in terms of how they, um, all right, can you guys see my screen? Just to be really quickly. Using Excel as a way to manage their membership. And so I'm trying to tell you, do not need to use Excel. But could you just confirm that you can see the screen of Wild Apricot that I've got here? I'm showing you a web page. Anyone? Just checking. Yep. Yes, you can see. Okay, good. All right. So Wild Apricot is an excellent uh, membership CRM system, and you can tell tell that you're that it is totally catered for associations, for not-for-profit organisations, for clubs, and it actually goes for even membership organisation. Um, it's always it's been voted one. We've actually see it is actually being used by BPW Australia. And what's really good that in addition to having an online database, you can have a website builder, so you can use it for your website. It take, takes care of online payments, events. So BPW is very well obviously known for having uh, meetings with members. It can handle that. It also handles email newsletters so, um, so that you don't have to worry about another system. So you have one system to manage your database with your members. You can have a, your, a professional looking website. It handles payments. It can handle your event management. And then it can also handle your email newsletter. Not just email newsletter, but also from communicating with various um, you know, categories of members. The other thing that it has, I think what I wanted to show you is um, the integration. Let me just see if it shows you here. It did have the integration in um, a different page. So it connects with PayPal and with the online, it connects with PayPal and Stripe. So you don't have to worry about, you know, um, makes it very easy to integrate with your bank account or with your PayPal account. Um, and like I said, it handles your um, uh, members very well, and it also has a mobile app version so that you could easily find uh, managers um, on your phone without having to actually always log in. So if I tell you the pricing, you will see that there is a free version. If you have 50 or less contacts, so not just members, but you can stick with members, but just contact, it's free forever. Um, and then and then, and then, then when you start growing, when you start having more and more people interested in BPW and then you start generating the membership income, the cost is not as uh, prohibitive as you would see with other systems. So if I go with um, the CRM component, just keeping an eye on my time, um, I would highly recommend that. That would be, I would say, the absolute basis of what is it that you need to do. Um, in terms of operation, I highly recommend that at least the president should have a G Suite account, and G Suite will give you all the tools, but an existing, like a, a, a not a generic Gmail address, but actually an email address using the domain name of your club or your federation. And so that anybody can take over when you have the changes in um, the committee, and um, it just helps with managing that. I can go into details if you want to do the questions in terms of what you can tell me. But Trello is a project management software, but it's in it's it's done in I guess like um, what I call like a board. And um, if I show you Trello that I have previously previously prepared. So this is a G Suite. So I've got you here and you can start a free trial and you see that you've got all of these tools and access. Trello is this one here. 
and Trello is a good way to organize your committee and to keep track of who's doing what. So if you're not using Trello and if you're not committed to using it, and you can, there is a free version where you can have one board, you can actually say track of, okay, what are the tasks, who's doing what, who's progressing, who's finished it, and, and your committee can be really empowered um, to keep you up to date. The next one, um, in terms of marketing, there are very, I guess with being in a marketing agency, there's so many different ways, um, and especially with social media, but I think in the interest of time and how you need to manage your um, own, I guess, resources, if you can focus any one of these, but all three would be ideal, is Facebook, Eventbrite, and Meetup. They are excellent tools in terms of um, getting your message across. Facebook, you can create a group, um, and with social media, it's the best way to adapt. I'm not saying to ignore Twitter. I'm not saying to ignore LinkedIn or um, any other social media. What I'm saying is that it is, it's best to focus and do really well. And if you can focus on Facebook and Eventbrite for your events uh, and use the Meetup for your events to nurture the audience, to scale, these are the tools I highly recommend. Um, the next one to kind of like, I don't know if you, any of you have heard of Slack, but Slack is a great tool for um, trying to automate. So, well, connecting your emails to Slack. Oh, I didn't bring that up. So we'll see if I could bring it up quickly um, while we're on the call. But um, Slack is a great team collaboration communication tool, and you can use Zapier to connect to your tools, um, your all of your emails, because we get bombarded with so many emails. Instead of looking at emails, you just have it all connected into Slack and get your committee and your members to look at Slack as a way. Um, but definitely for committee, um, as a working tool to co collaborate easily without being bombarded with so many tools, and then you can create different channels in terms of what you need to do. And lastly, what's really important, having Xero as a mini accounting tool, so if you don't need Xero spreadsheets, are fine. But if you use Xero, it makes everything more efficient. Um, and Stripe is a payment gateway, like PayPal, but it's fully integrated and makes it easier and it's um, more cost effective in order to collect payments and Stripe integrates with anything. So even if you don't use Wild Apricot um, or Inventbrite as a tool, Stripe is a great payment gateway to integrate with whatever you're doing. So, um, Anne, I might just get you to let me know because I know that um, I've just gone over by two minutes. Um, how am I doing? And, you know, I'm, I can save the question and ask this at the end. Yes. Sorry, I've got two of me in here and I never remember which one to unmute. Anyway, <laughs> That's right. never mind Never mind why there are two of me here. So, uh, yeah, why don't we save the questions until the end so that we uh, allow Lisa to present at her leisure. But we will, everyone, we yeah. will certainly have a time for Q&A. So hold those thoughts or make a note. We'll be with you. Lisa, thank you, Sandy. Yeah, and I just want to add, I'm loving the questions. I'm loving the questions, questions that are coming through. So feel free to just keep adding questions, even also on Lisa's thing, and then so that we can all just answer at the end. Okay. Great. Great, thank you. Um, that, was, that was a great presentation, I think, um, for me as well, some of the software um, I, I've heard of it, but may not be quite familiar with it as well. So I think um, for, for me, we will be, uh, I'll be presenting sort of a different perspective and hopefully add to the conversation as well. Um, and, and later on with Sandra, answer some of the questions that um, you have the best we can. Um, so let me share my screen. So as Yasmin introduced me, I'm currently the president of BPW Hong Kong. Um, we are a club that promotes and model youth leadership. So a lot of our members are young BPW members. Um, we have around 50 to 60 
um, where we're currently under our membership drive at the moment. So trying to get a lot more people to join us. Um, so with that, the way that I'm going to structure my presentation is I'm going to go through first, discuss a bit on um, strategy, then going into a few of the technology platforms that we use. And take in mind that for our club, one, we feature a lot of young members and two, those members have certain preferences in terms of how they communicate and interact with us. So digital strategy for the 21st century, I think if you look at technology, obviously we know that you know it's something that's not gonna go away. We're using technology now with this webinar and day to day, um, we have different platforms, different um, apps and services that we're using. For any club and federation, I think there's no perfect strategy that um, me or Sandra could tell you that would fit your club. Um, I think it really depends on a range of factors and everything from your audience. Will the tools that you introduce reach them directly? Do they know how to use it? If, if not, is there another tool that's better suit for that purpose? I think we always have to keep in mind that um, and on the other side of this technology, there's still a person that you're trying to reach and a me potential member that you wanted to recruit or have join um, your community. Um, second would be their preferences. For BPW Hong Kong, um, I'll share later as well, we are quite a nimble team. So we prefer a lot of the time to use WhatsApp or other chat messenger to you know, make quick decision, to have discussion um, and, and, and make things move forward. Another one is um, your preference for your members. Do they have platforms that they are already on and they would prefer to be reached out that way? For example, um, I think many of you ask questions about social media like Facebook everyone uses that but is that the right way and is that the way that we can communicate with them best i think you need to ask both questions um, the needs of your club and federation so for you as a club how do you want to engage your audience in order to influence them do you want to make them um perhaps react to certain things or um you would like to have an open communication, you know, where it's two ways and it's discussional base. Um, so that's something to also think about. And the other, and um, for us at BPW Hong Kong is quite important is capacity building and the management of it. Whether we have enough time, enough resources, um, and um, enough staff to actually use and run those technology. So I think Th those are things that we think about at, um, at our club when we look at technology that we use. For us, our toolkit is quite nimble. We're quite a, um, we're quite a slick team. A lot of the decision making that we use um, do happen on WhatsApp groups and conversation chat. But let me first go on to the operation side. For us, our, our core, of what we do um, lies on my Google or the G Suite that Sandra mentioned earlier. So everything from Google Drive, which is similar to Dropbox where you can store and upload your documentation to Forms, which is you know, a, a survey type documents, Sheets, Docs, Slides, that's the equivalent of um, Excel, Word, and PowerPoint. The fact that we have it on Google is that we can update it and edit it at the same time. And for us, it's quite efficient when we have conversation on one end on, on a chat group and then making the changes so everyone can see it immediately. Um, for us, that is the most efficient way to make sure everyone is on the right page. So there would be times where we have, you know, three or four members on the same document trying to edit and trying to make things um, to work things through. On the communication side, um, WhatsApp or other chat group, for example, like um, you have Facebook for work that you can utilize and it operates quite, quite similarly. I think as a small, as a, um, you know, small size organization, 
a lot of the conversation and decision needs to happen in person. But if in person doesn't work, you can't always, like for us in Hong Kong right now, um, we are sort of home quarantined due to the outbreak. A lot of the time we would do it over digital and technology. So LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook, these three also operate as a platform for us to promote ourselves and do our marketing and public relations. Um, for marketing, we use two platforms. One is Eventbrite and the other is GoBuddy. I can quickly show you both. I think um, most people are quite familiar with Eventbrite. Um, GoBuddy is a new platform that we, um, that we use and it's a local Hong Kong platform. So um, first Eventbrite, I think um, everyone is quite familiar. Most people are quite familiar with this. Um, it's an event-based platform, quite similar to Facebook event, but um, it's sort of separate and standalone. Um, so you have a lot of, for here, we have a lot of our um, mentorship program meetings and events and our recent AGM up there. It links also to our social media page, as you see on the side. The GoBuddy platform, it's a new platform that we onboarded. Um, we felt the need to use a, another platform that have more functions. So GoBuddy, it benefits us in the way that it has a community function. So similar to CRM, where we can keep track of the people that are registered and then send them notice. I think this is something that was missing in Eventbrite for us. So we're trying to make the shift um, to, to use this platform. For training tools, I think um, I'll briefly mention this one. Um, so everyone knows about Skype as a platform to communicate um, with you know, video, ch video chat and also screen sharing. Um, Zoom is quite similar and everyone who is online right now is dialed in using Zoom. So, you know, you can see my face, I can talk to you, and you have, you know, we have chat function, and it's quite engaging so that there's a more human touch to this technology. And, and lastly, just some best practices. Um, I, think, I think for us, we always have to remember that um, what we're trying to use technology for is still to reach out to someone on the other side of the machine. So um, keep that in mind. And with any platform that you use, um, I would say, you know, experiments, trial, and if it doesn't work, then do it again. It doesn't, you know, if you never try the technology, you never know if actually it's suited for your club or not. Um, also consistent use of the platform. If you're committed to it, making sure that, you know, you have a calendar in marketing, for example, you have a calendar of when you push things out, you make sure that it's consistent that you're using that platform and people can reach out to you that way um, and, and make sure that you are also online on those um, systems. Another thing that's quite key and depending on your region, data management security policy. So um, globally, there's a lot of like, you know, GDPR in Europe, for example. So um, privacy, you know, data privacy, that's a key thing that you have to look at as well. So if you have any members or any committee that have legal background, do consult them. Um, we ourselves, we're trying to update them as we go as well. And obviously having the committee align on the different platform and the usage for it, um, that's very important. And making sure that everyone is in line, but also that everyone cares about how we are being perceived on um, a lot of the social media platform that we use. So that's it for my part. Um, I'll stop the presentation sharing. Okay, we're still going to leave it up to both Lisa and Sandra to facilitate the discussion, but we will uh, ask you all to unmute as you wish to speak and jump right in. Uh, Sandra or Lisa, do you want to get us started? Yeah, I was going to start addressing some of the questions here. 
um, that are on chat. So I think they're fantastic questions. I'll, um, um, I love Chantel. I think you're a Canadian because you loved it that uh, while well, Apricot is Canadian. And yes, it's uh, uh, the number one membership software CRM system. Um, I think Lisa, um, you know, with a very agile Hong Kong club with what they're doing, um, I certainly like um, have more, if you don't mind me saying, a lot more te technical capabilities. And so they can use um, G Suite and manage uh, a lot without the need for a CRM um, and using Eventbrite and, Go, and GoBuddy um, is, is, is way. So like I said, I, I spell out and, and Lisa's really very much on point when it comes to the strategies, like what is the best one suited for your organization. Um, and you do need to take into account, so for example, not that we have BPW in China, but Facebook, you know, for marketing doesn't work because um, obviously it's not um, available over there. So you look at WeChat. And what I'm talking about is very much of um, um, what works, I guess, from all the different systems that I've seen. And I can go a little bit more to explain, I think, in the questions. Um, I, with Gmail, I know that Gmail, yes, you get your gigabytes and access to Google Drive. But it's also, when you think about software, think about the support. What I've found is that if you, because you have the change of a committee, if you use something that doesn't offer support to help you access the history and the historical, um, because um, a, a, a free account of a paid system, you get far more support than a completely free system. So just be mindful of that. Um, especially we saw an incident actually in BPW Sydney where the um, president taking over uh, locked herself out, couldn't access the email account, I couldn't help her with that, and and Google support because it was a G Suite account helped her to get that sorted out uh, without requiring me and getting access to it and proving you know what, what was required. So there is that that happens because I've seen time and time again, especially in the BPW environment, that when you have new committee members, um, you lose touch with previous BPW members who may not be able to help you to get access and having a free, at least a free account of a paid software, you get far more support than a completely free account. But again, I'm not saying that Gmail is bad. I'm just saying that just be mindful of that. Um, and then with the thing about Eventbrite and Meetup, um, I'm just, this is just, again, a little bit of, like, not my opinion, but my observation. Um, I wasn't a fan of Meetup. I found that you get a lot of tire kickers that are um, in there. However, what I found was that Meetup and Eventbrite are great event marketing strategies to attract members and Eventbrite is very much working with Google algorithm so that if anybody wants to, when you think about it, you want, if you want members to find, potential members to find you that don't know you, Eventbrite uh, appreciates, I guess, the keywords they're likely to use because of the content within your event and to be found. Uh, Meetup is a very good way to nurture it. When it comes to the registration, it is a bit frustrating when you eventually get people through, but Meetup can really build up a following. And I have now changed my views on Meetup from the past, from being tire kickers to now um, the ability to nurture um, an audience. And it's that whole nurturing takes a bit of effort to do it. The other thing I noticed in, in the question is how do you support your members with, um, with the tools? So by having, um, if I go back to Wild Apricot, and this is what I'm seeing in BPW Australia that uses Wild Apricot, is that your members can access files, can access the club presidents, depending if you're on the federation level, can access documents, templates, the knowledge base in order to help them manage their clubs. Um, on a local club level, maybe, it is a good way for, you have forums, it's a feature for forums so that you can really nurture that. 
So if you're looking at ways of how it can help to support your members, while well, Apricot can do that. Saying that, Facebook, I have seen, I'm part of many business groups and very active um, business groups that even I'm no longer with them as a member, um, I'm still part of it, of other initiatives. And I can tell you that I get to keep track of all the network and everybody knows what's going on. And, and it's fully supported. The groups are very effective, but you don't, you, you have some documents and things like that. And I've seen, and I'm part of many business groups that use the Facebook groups very efficiently to support the members, to give them what they want, to be responsive, to give their information and to nurture them. And it doesn't have to be just net members. You can have a group just for members, and then you can have a group for anybody who's ever been in contact with your club or federation. And Facebook group still is by far the most effective way to manage um, these sort of discussions and, and helping members. So sorry, Lisa, I hope I didn't take too much of my time to the time to answer these questions. Um, should tell you Not at all. Many great questions, but I'm going to leave it with Lisa to um, talk. <laughs> I think um, the point you make about Facebook, um, that, that's quite interesting. For us in Hong Kong, um, I think Facebook events and our page are typically used as um, an, a place where our member can go there for information. Um, so it's not a platform where we engage them. As much as our members are online and they are connected with us on our BPW Hong Kong pages, um, Facebook, I think for Asia region is a bit sometimes obsolete or um, not a lot of people are using it as much as they used to. So for us, we, we found WhatsApp to be quite a good platform, um, especially we have 50 or 60 members or so. It's quite good to have conversation and chat with them. So we day to day, um, one of our unique uniqueness is to share information and share um, articles on and, and papers on woman issue, woman challenges that we see in the news. Um, and this is in addition to a lot of the events that we have, we would share them on the WhatsApp group, see um, who is interested um, and would chat with them. And there's a personal touch to that. But of course, that comes with a lot of effort and energy. So our committee member, we, you know, we might have closer members members that we're closer to, and then we would have to ask, you know, that those committee to invite them, for example. So it is based on relationship and you sort of have to know, you know, with, with like a CRM as well, you sort of have to know ah, uh, who reach, who to reach out to that member would be the most efficient way to invite them or um, to, to get them to join our events or to be interested and actually have a dialogue with them. So I think, um, that is the case that we see for Hong Kong. So if I may jump in here for just a moment, I want to add to that. Um, many of you know I was the founding president in Hong Kong, and for the first year and a half of my two-year term, for some reason, WhatsApp groups didn't occur to me or my exco. Lisa wasn't on that exco, or she would have told us to use it. Even though uh, WhatsApp I was using for everything else. And we tried a group on Facebook, and most of the members just weren't that interested. So we had our Facebook page for marketing. But when it came to the group, it was never very active, no matter how we used it. And we had Twitter and LinkedIn and so on as well. But that just wasn't for our members. And mostly, it was one-way emails from me as president, occasionally from other ESCO members, to broadcast to your members. And I think unless you have some really hot news item that you need to send to them, that's fine. But otherwise, broadcasting one way is simply by definition not engaging. And the moment we finally made a WhatsApp group, the difference was remarkable overnight. Because now BPW Hong Kong was in the hand of our members and always in the, their pocket or their purse or always with them. And I think psychologically, as a psychologist, that is a very different impact. So whether it's WhatsApp or another group, you need a chat group where it's interactive, all the members at any point can contribute to that. And what we see in our WhatsApp group over the last couple, two or three years under the second president and now Lisa, particularly those two, more than me, 
is that the members are really contributing everything that's happening in Hong Kong and sometimes international news items as well that's available for women. And it becomes the number one resource for our members who want to know what's happening with gender equality or what they can attend this weekend or where they can up their professional skills or what job opportunity there is. And it's so dynamic that for sure that was one of the best things we ever did. I just don't know why it took me a year and a half to even get there. So Lisa, would you also mention about what you're doing because everyone is home quarantined? And by the way, I'm in Hong Kong now too, everyone. You never know where in the world I am, but I'm also here. Would you uh, tell them how you've adjusted uh, to much more online format overall, but specifically the meeting we were talking about that's happening next week? Yes. So um, our program chair, Lena, she's actually on, on the webinar as well. Um, so we had a long conversation about what we're going to do because of the novel coronavirus outbreak um, in, in Hong Kong. We have you know, quite, quite a few infected as well, um, and, and numbers are high up there in Asia. So a lot of us are home quarantined at the moment, so we're all working from home. And to, in order to provide um, programs and continue to bring value to our members, we have decided to look into online solutions. So we have a few things um, planned and, and, and running. So first one, we have developed a program where we have fireside chat with our members um, to get them to know each other more, especially uh, on, Right now, like we're all at home. Um, yes, we're working from the computer, but there are a lot of free time in between as well. So we're hosting our first webinar next Wednesday um, around 12 noon Hong Kong time. Um, we have our global skills workshop chair, chairwoman. Um, so she'll be telling, her, telling about her entrepreneurship journey, how she comes to create her um, current business and um, a, a lot a little sharing to inspire us so that will happen um, on a video conference conferencing platform so um, we'll be doing that the other one that we have we are looking at is for international women's day we initially have a few things on and you know it's quite a big day for us and for all clubs internationally but because we can't meet in, in person we can't meet each other so we have decided to look at um, a Q&A format to feature our member and ask them what, you know, each four equal, which is a theme for International Women's Day 2020, what that means for them, what goals they have to bring each four equal to their workplace, as well as um, one of the other, one of the last question we have is if you have superpower to bring this to reality, what superpower would that be? And how would you achieve that? Um, so it's a, it's a fun way to sort of engage our member, to feature them and to profile um, the amazing woman that we have in BPW Hong Kong. So that's the two programs that we're gonna run um, this month and also the month of March. I also want to just add one more thing. Uh, in terms of Zoom, because Yasmin and I are using Zoom for this. I'm using it for several other programs for BPW members around the world and other BPW clubs and international have begun using Zoom more and more. One of the features a lot of people don't know about Zoom, first of all, you can also have a free account, but and you can have up to 100 participants at a time, which is enough for most of us, but it will stop the session after 40 minutes. Some clubs already have conditioned their members, okay, after 40 minutes, this is going to shut off, I'll log in again, and they have another 40 minutes. So they just continue like that. A lot of other clubs just simply pay for the professional membership. There are several levels, but the next membership up, which is professional, is very inexpensive. In this case, I just pay for it myself because I use it also for my business. But what I want to say is at that level, there's no time limit, first of all. You can also record your sessions, which can be very useful as we're recording this tonight. But another feature is breakout rooms. So just as we do at conferences, you can have one presenter presenting and using screen share with all different sorts of looking at a website as much as a PPT and all sorts of other applications. But then you can also either randomly through the program itself, distribute people into smaller groups. You tell it, give me 
I have 40 participants, give me 10 groups, and it will randomly assign them into groups of four, and suddenly all you see are you and three other participants on there. And the host can float in and out of those rooms as they wish and join the different conversations. And then when the host gives you um, a heads up, they can send a message to all of the groups saying, okay, you've got two minutes left or whatever time limit they want to give you, so you know to wrap it up and then tell it to stop the breakout room and then it will come back in again. And conversely, you can, instead of having people assigned randomly, you can tell it you want these six members in this group and these six members in this group, for example. So if you have specific groups that you want. So that can be a very useful function as you're looking for flexibility and having online meetings and so on. And I noticed Tomi has joined us and recently in another project that I am running that she was in, we also talked about uh, not all members being able to come to meetings and that you need to also offer some of your meetings online. And for those places that are very far apart, such as has been mentioned to us in the Rome Club, where it can be two hours between members, but still in Rome, or for the places where weather is a major issue in summer in Hong Kong, there are a lot of typhoons. So a lot of times you can't hold meetings online, so the online meeting can become very important. And then I would say, you can interweave it and maybe four times a year you make sure or at least four times a year that you have a face-to-face -face meeting or event and the other times you're having online meetings. So, and before it was the virus, it was the protests in Hong Kong as well. So Hong Kong's had a rough time for the last eight or nine months actually. So when you need to have any variation, we need this kind of adaptability, I think. Now you're muted. You were okay before. I was okay before. Okay. Now, well, now you're good. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm so, I, I do owe you on a letter and I'll come back to that later. But I'm just going to say I'm very, so very glad that my first time with you has been this session because as an oldie who has to have Joe keep me in track with uh, technology, I've learned an awful lot today. But also, I think it's a big breakthrough for me well, I'm just going to start six months of intense activity uh, with, with my newly formed um, CAC Constitution Advisory Committee because I think we'll you, we've been using Skype in the previous two trienniums. I, I'm like Liz, I'm very impressed with Zoom and I think this will be ideal for me to use. So I might be coming back to you girls to give me a bit more help on that for setting up and so on, if that's all right. But I think uh, we have a lot of work to do. And we, uh, I mean, sometimes we've had, um, as Yasmin will tell you, we might have had um, Skype conferences, three, four hours and so on. So we use an awful lot of time um, gathering people from the five regions of the world um, to do this work which we've got to have ready for the General Assembly in August for Orlando. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. I'm impressed. I've learned quite a lot and I'm pleased and I'll come again. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Sylvia. Um, this this uh, webinars, um, the goal is exactly to uh, provide to our members more tools and uh, a little bit more of uh, training about BPW issues and how we can um, do the things in a better way. I encourage all of you also to, to watch our videos that are in uh, YouTube. Um, we have a, a channel in YouTube where all the training sessions were um, in archive. So uh, this is our contribution. And again, I want to thank uh, Anne Hilti because um, when I uh, explained to her my desire to provide this kind of tools to our members, she was the one who made this possible. And um, we, we, this is an example that we need to work as a team because we are not experts in, in everything. And uh, I don't know if there is uh, 
another question. I think that the, the training session of today show us that for different regions, different clubs, the needs are different. But as an organization at the international level, we also need to think from the local to the international, how we can support our organization to be uh, um, um, visible. And uh, we, uh, every time that we explain what means BPW International to a new audience, and we said that it was born in 1930 and is uh, the most powerful women organization around the world. And they said, mm, I never heard about it. And it was in part my concern as uh, international president that this cannot stay like this. So I think that if, if we train in the local level, we will uh, get uh, also results at the international level in this uh, uh, communication tools and marketing tools. Thank you very much for our speakers. I don't know if there is another uh, question for our speakers. I think in lieu of the time, I'll just wrap up if you, I may. <clears throat> so uh, again, as Yasma was just saying, thanks to both of our speakers, Lisa in Hong Kong from, well, we're all from home at the moment, but she's from home permanently at the moment. So thank you for that a great use of digital technology. And Sandra, who's been teaching BPW how to use technology for at least the last six or seven years that I'm aware, since she was on the executive and probably a lot longer, and trying to give us strategies to bring even the, those who are still a little resistant kicking and screaming into the 21st century. So we hope to fully upgrade the model. Uh, someone has asked on the chat, I think it was Chantal, about our um, Facebook, uh, sorry, our, not only the Facebook page, which you all already know about, but our um, YouTube channel. And I don't have the link at the moment because I'm in this and the other programs and I can't get to that at the same time as we're in this session. But it, if you search for leadership in BPW, absolutely that channel will come up. And uh, it's also on our Facebook page, so you can find the URL there. The chat with all of these questions tonight, um, as we close the session, I get a copy of the chat as a doc. I will send that to our speakers along with all of your email addresses because you've registered for this session. So you'll all get the same email and they can respond to your chats. So I'm putting you both on a little more duty. Sorry about that, but I'm sure you don't mind. But if there's anything there that you feel you put a question and it's been not answered yet, not addressed yet, you'll have one more chance to address that. And we may well do a follow-up to this webinar also. So thank you again, not only to the speakers and to my partner in crime, Yasmin, but also and to Sylvia for joining us tonight for the first time, one of our illustrious and past international presidents, as of course Yasmin is, uh, but also to all of you for joining us tonight. And please take the word back to your clubs and invite people to join us for future webinars as well. This will be online probably within the next one to two days and we'll announce that on our Facebook page. Okay, thank you and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on where you are. And for Sandra, it's midnight. For Yasmin, she's up before the sun was. So that's our time zone span tonight. So thank you to all of you. Good night all.